Welcome to another product review where I'll be building and demonstrating the Soda Beams Pico Tuner. The Pico Tuner is a small single band antenna coupler, ideal for use with N fed half wavelength wire antennas. As you've seen on other of my videos, they are ideal for portable operating because you only need a single support, either a squid pole or even a kite. The Pico Tuner is intended to operate on a single HF band from 7 to 28 MHz. You need to choose the band when you build it. Here's what you get in the kit. The printed circuit board, a T50-6 toid, wire to wind the coil on the toid, a trimmer capacitor, a nylon nut bolt and washer, presumably to mount the toid, and a resistor, 4.7K. Now note, and this is very important, that on the back of the business card is a chip capacitor, a surface mount component. I've never mounted surface mount before, so this will be an interesting experiment. But it's a reasonable size, and the board isn't too cluttered, so it should be fairly easy. It's a short form kit, so you might want to find something to enclose it, if you're going to be using it in a portable situation where you need robustness. To cut down on mailing costs, the instructions are not included. Instead, you download it from the Soda Beams website. I'd recommend before buying the unit, reading the instructions so you can familiarise yourself with what you're getting. It's quite a detailed manual, starting off with a list of parts, the tools you need, photos of every construction stage, including information on soldering the surface mount capacitor, which by the way you can substitute with a regular through hole capacitor if you really can't handle surface mount. The number of turns on the coil, there's both a primary and a secondary. And finally testing and operation. It's particularly important to have everything in a bowl so that the parts don't bounce off the table, never to be seen again. In particular, the surface mount capacitor on this card shouldn't be untaped until the last possible opportunity. As it turns out, you actually mount the surface mount capacitor first. So it's off to the first aid kit to grab some tweezers. Or maybe I could just unfold this paper clip. Here's the surface mount capacitor ready to put in the board. There's the plastic backing sheet that I peeled off. This is made of thicker plastic which goes around the capacitor and once you've peeled the backing sheet off then the capacitor will pop out and it's really important in this case to have the plate here. A magnifying glass would be desirable but I think we can get by without one. Just aligned the capacitor to the circuit board. If you were to have some blue tack or similar joining the bottom of the board to the to the dish here then that will help a lot because you can see the board is moving. I've just made a very quick application of the tip of the soldering iron to one side of the capacitor and you just need to do the other side um, Here's the board with the chip capacitor finely mounted. There were a couple of tense moments, but if you're careful, it shouldn't be a drama. And as I said before, you could just use a regular 100 picofarad leaded capacitor instead of the chip capacitor supplied. This is the partially built antenna coupler with the main aerial coil completed. 31 turns as I'm building this for 7 MHz. What we've got now is just a parallel tuned circuit comprising of the inductor, the trimmer capacitor and on the other side the surface mount capacitor. The suggested method of testing employs an antenna analyzer, but I don't have one of those. 
but there are alternatives which should be just as good. Here's a temporary test setup. One loop of wire from a BNC connector which will plug into the FT817 or any other receiver and another loop going to an SO239 that will connect to my dipole antenna. The idea of this test is to get this tuned circuit resonant on about 7.1 MHz. You do that by listening for maximum noise as you rotate the trimmer control. I will now adjust the trimmer. There's a clear increase in noise level indicating that the tuned circuit is resonant. I've now added the link winding which goes to the transceiver and as suggested I've allowed a bit of extra slack in case an extra turn is needed. Just added is a 4.7k resistor temporarily for adjustment. Oh, oh. and a small tweak gets it down to nothing. The antenna is set up as an inverted L, 10 metres up and 10 metres across, with the vertical part supported by the squid pole. This is the antenna coupler and then the 6 metre counterpoise just drops down. Oh. Oh. And it's still flat at 7.2. Oh. And it's a couple of bars at 7.050. So it covers most of the 40 metre band without adjustment. on the air. Contacts were made up to several hundred kilometres, running 5 watts of SSB on 40 metres. All stations contacted gave favourable reports. If you're looking for a single band antenna coupler suitable for an N-fed half wave, then the Soda Beam's Pico Tuner comes highly recommended. If you want more information about QRP portable operating, antennas and equipment, why not read Minimum QRP? It's a Kindle ebook I published back in October, and there's over 1,100 sold. Available for under $5 US, visit my website at vk3ye.com or visit Minimum QRP on Amazon. Just type in Minimum QRP in the search window.